Little more than a hundred days ago, our whole world changed. China notified the World Health Organization about the existence of an emerging virus. A mysterious pneumonia has gripped China with scores hospitalized by the illness. So much has happened in the meantime. The United States military successfully killed Qasem Soleimani. You've obeyed the will of them. We've taken back the tools of self-government. The people have spoken and they have smashed the two-party system which this country has lived with for almost 100 years. While the sun still rises, our time horizons have been warped. It really does depend on what happens uh, over the course of the next two, three, three, three weeks. We've seen horrors in those months. I, I would actually feel dread and I actually would go, you know, I really had a sense of dread. But now it seems we have reason to hope. But actually, in recent weeks, there's so much happening. It's actually a very exciting time to be a scientist. Um, and I really do feel that we, we will get on top of this. Oh, how the world can change. Around the time we were all enjoying the Late Late Toy Show, something was happening on the far side of the world that would make this summer different to any other. A thing so small that if you scaled it up to be the size of your hand, your hand would be the size of the earth. It got into a person in central China and settled there. By mid-December, it seems it had spread and was rippling through Wuhan, a place many of us had never heard of. We may not have known it, but we were all about to start a severe learning process. It begins in December, Mark, when patients begin turning up at the hospital there with a lung disease, you know. And of course, the doctors first suspected it was just flu because it was quite similar. And they tried to find the flu virus in the people, couldn't find it. The doctors then looked for SARS and MERS, two types of coronavirus, and couldn't find them either. Coronaviruses are a very large group of viruses. What they have in common is their RNA viruses, so their genetic material is RNA. They're called coronaviruses because they're because they have this crown-like appearance on the outside. When they were first looked at down microscopes, they looked like they were wearing a crown. Despite fears about a SARS-like virus, local officials in Wuhan tried to hide the outbreak from the world, even as it was quietly exploding in the city. Chinese officials have arrested several people for spreading fake news online about the viral spread of pneumonia in the city of Wuhan. Doctors and medical workers pushed back. Eventually, on the second last day in December, case studies were leaked online. The documents reached the Chinese government in Beijing which alerted the World Health Organization. And they realize old people are very vulnerable once the case numbers begin to go up, you see. And then next thing is it starts to spread and, and you see it beginning to move out of China because of all the air travel, I guess, into other countries. And basically it's like a series of dominoes. Eight days after the medical documents had reached Beijing, Chinese scientists had isolated the virus. A group of experts found a new type of coronavirus in their preliminary lab results. Five days after that, the first list of what the virus is made of, the genome sequence, was published, allowing testing to be planned. And remember, all this was done two weeks before officials had even decided to lock down Wuhan. Kind of amazing. You know, Chinese researchers released the, the genome the geno sequence of this, of this virus, and two days after it was released, a company called Moderna had a candidate vaccine uh, designed. Fast forward just three months, and that candidate vaccine is one of dozens being worked on now. Some further down the line than others, all relying on and reacting to what people are learning daily about the virus. It changes every day, but so far there are four vaccines gone into phase one trials. Um, so it will be, uh, you know, I'd say possibly 18 months before we have a vaccine that's going to be uh, for, for use right across the world. But don't think they're waiting on that. More is in the works. Since January, as the virus swamped hospitals and locked down cities, medical science has been catching up. The thing that's been striking, I think, is the speed at which new evidence is emerging, firstly, the speed at which this new evidence is being shared for common learning, which is a really important thing as well, and then thirdly, the speed at which this new evidence is emerging, being shared, and then is being used to inform guidance and practice and policies. If there was a good time for this to happen, it's kind of now, because we have all these technologies and we know a lot more about viruses. So all those new technologies have meant that science can get its teeth into it much more quickly than if it was, say, 10 or 15 years ago. 
We've gone from knowing almost nothing about this virus to sequencing it, designing tests and running those tests across the globe at a scale supply chains are struggling to match. We got in the, the tests, they arrived on uh, a Friday and microbiology scientists, they worked around the clock to get this up and running by the following Monday. So we got the validation done in Partly 72 hours, which is something we've never done before. Even within the court region, they've come up and developed their own license buffer, which is one of the ingredients, the key ingredients that we need to extract the RNA and, and run the test. So things like that are happening, you know, globally, nationally, locally. It's, it's really good to see that. The tests, the vaccine trials, the policies, the protocols all erupted within the last 100 days and are still being worked on. And it doesn't stop there. While no drug will eradicate the virus, one may significantly lessen how hard it hits. So look out for what the scientists have to say about them too. Not only vaccines, and there are a lot of potential therapeutics out there that are showing really, really, really good results. There are 51 drugs and therapies gone into trial. A lot of them are targeting uh, their antiviral drugs and they're targeting the, the viral replication. So another group of drugs, they're targeting that pneumonia and the lung damage. So, they're, so that's why we're looking, the people are looking at two different uh, aspects of, of COVID-19. They could be anywhere between six weeks and several months away, but they're coming too. Right now, there's a global effort to reset our time horizon. Scientists are working hour by hour to let us plan our lives once again in terms of months and not weeks. It's a seven day week, certainly. Everybody understands the absolute critical nature of getting this right. So much has been done in the last 100 days, but the next 100 days will be just as important. I, I'm on the edge of my seat waiting for these experiments, because that's what they are, to read out, as we call it. And there's all those options, and let's just see which one it's going to be. This will be controlled. There's very little evidence to suggest that the, that the virus is mutating or that it will be you know, recurring every year, but in that sense, that's going to be taken into account in vaccine design. I went from being a, st a, st a stage of dread early on, um, because it really seemed to, was out of control in Italy for a while, to now feeling, yes, people know what they're doing here, and, and scientists, science will definitely win on this one.